Today's PPI, the producer price index, coming in at 8.5% year on year, pretty much lots in another 75 basis point hike, and that would be the fourth in a row. As bad as that sounds, the Federal Reserve and what they may or may not do is not your biggest concern. It gets worse. We're going to talk about the risks and what stocks can function as an insurance policy if the worst happens. Welcome to The Money Runner. I'm David Nelson. One look around the planet and it's pretty easy to spot our biggest challenge. While I might have huge concerns and even disagreement regarding the Fed and the officials that orchestrate our monetary policy, they're at least rational. When Fed officials make a mistake, it might take a while for them to recognize the blunder, but eventually they get it. They make the necessary changes. Half a world away, Putin is threatening a nuclear exchange. Xi holds live fire drills in the Taiwan Straits. And who knows what will come next from Iran or North Korea? A lot scarier than whether or not your mortgage payment goes up. In November of 2021, Fed Chair Powell admitted it was time to retire the word transitory when it comes to inflation. It took the Fed until March to finally stop buying bonds, but eventually they got it. We can't say that about our world leaders. When they make mistakes and are called out by the world community, they double down and push even harder. Putin is threatening the use of limited tactical nuclear weapons. Limited tactical nuclear weapons. There's nothing limited about a nuclear exchange. Once you've opened Pandora's box, the escalation that can happen happens quickly. Some tactical nukes have destruction yields of as small as 0.1 kilotons, some many times larger. While decidedly smaller than Hiroshima or Nagasaki bombs used in World War II, they have enormous power, not to mention the radiation that would follow. Who and how many would die depends on which way the wind blows. How long would it take for the president to escalate if U.S. soldiers were exposed to life-threatening radiation? One likely scenario is a conventional U.S. response. Take out the Russian target responsible for the attack. Look, we've been watching Putin for decades. If he feels threatened for his own life, or potential collapse of his government, the odds of another launch go up exponentially. As bad as this situation might be in Ukraine, President Xi and his desire to take back Taiwan may represent an even bigger threat for the United States. With recent actions by the administration regarding semiconductor technology transfer and keeping our most advanced chips out of China, the timeline for Xi to move on Taiwan might accelerate. Taiwan's contract manufacturers currently account for about 60% of total global foundry market. Taiwan Semi, you're looking at on, on the screen right there, is one of the biggest. If Taiwan fell to the Chinese, it might take years for the U.S. to recover, not to mention the foreign policy hit and the loss of our standing with our Asia-Pacific allies. Think about it. Semiconductors touch everything. It's not just your computer, the network. It's your refrigerator, your car, the internet of things. Just about every electronic device you use would be affected. The press is saying that the administration has stepped up contingency planning for a possible Chinese assault on Taiwan. I have no idea what that might entail, but it has to mean a step up in our military presence in the region. So where can we hide out? When markets are challenged like they are now, and this isn't my first rodeo, I look for themes. I look for themes that have a secular tailwind and maybe not as dependent on the business cycle or the economy. With every corner of the planet a geopolitical hotspot, I got to believe defense stocks will have a bid for some time. Today's modern defense company isn't just about air, land, and sea systems. Most of them are leaders in cyber technology and other cutting edge solutions that go well beyond manned and unmanned systems. My current horse in the race is Northrop Grumman. There's other great companies as well. Lockheed Martin is one, Raytheon, General Dynamics. They're all major players. The bad news, they're not as cheap as they used to be. The market's gone down, and for the most part, these stocks have held up. 
Northrop currently trades at a modest premium to the market. The best thing about defense stocks is they can function as an insurance policy. If there's a geopolitical or even worse, a significant military event, most stocks in your portfolio are gonna get hit and hit hard. Defense stocks might be the only shares up that day. Every trade has risk, so size the position accordingly. In addition to the market risk and one developing headwind for Northrop and really the entire defense industry took place last week. OPEC's decision to cut 2 million barrels of daily production has triggered a rising voice of concern from inside the Beltway. Some OPEC countries like Saudi Arabia are big buyers of US military hardware, and there are members of Congress that are threatening to withdraw support for those sales. Look, I get it. Saudi Arabia, OPEC, they're not friends. In addition, the White House and lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are threatening to revive, leg revive legislation called NOPEC, or No Oil Producing and Exporting Cartels Act. If it became law, the Justice Department would sue Saudi Arabia and other OPEC nations for price fixing. I'm not sure what good it would do, and there would likely be retaliation. While the above is a risk, I get it. The secular tailwind for this industry, I think, will last for some time. If you like today's podcast and want to learn more, or you just have a passion for what's working and what isn't, hit subscribe. And please leave comments, good and bad. Helps us make the pod a lot better. Questions? I promise to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for joining. I'm David Nelson.